So Deanna, hold on one second. I'm just gonna spotlight her really quick. Oh, all okay. right, there we go. I think someone else is doing it for me, either Dylan or Russ. All right, awesome. All right, Deanna, welcome to the show. <laughs> How's it going? Good to have you here. I'm nervous okay, so to be here. Again, those of you who tapped in and uh, got in here uh, maybe just a few minutes after, just remember it is our summit today and it is live. A handful of you, 125 of us, uh, are able to gather here uh, on the Utah side live and in person. And then, of course, uh, we'll be streaming that live out to the rest of the company. Hope that all of you will be in attendance. Should be a great day. And uh, we are uh, going to have a, a very, very good time. And it's good to have some uh, normalness, like, uh, normalizing some things uh, back. And it's been nearly, if it has been, it's probably been exactly one year since we've had a summit. So hope that I'll see you all there, uh, either virtually or in person. All right. So, Deanna, let me just... Uh, I just want to 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 uh, mention that uh, this young lady has been in the business for 13 years. She sent me a text and said, "Why do you want to interview me?" And I'm all looking at her numbers, looking at the time she's been in the business, and uh, she's one of our great agents up in the Centerville office. She's been in the business for uh, over thir uh, 13 years, and uh, you know, earning a couple hundred plus thousand bucks a year. And I just love her energy. I love her attitude. I love the fact that she. Uh, is a mom. She has tons of responsibilities. And I love the fact that uh, she's kicking it and killing it and working real estate. So we're excited to have you, Deanna. Well, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a good, it's going to be a good time. All right. So let me ask you this. So uh, what do you love about real estate? And what do you hate about real estate? Well, I hate what everybody hates. I hate prospecting, but I love what it does for my business. But what I love about real estate is um, the end result. I love helping people that need help. I love educating people, um, helping them decide, you know, because I have a lot of people that um, I'll meet with, I'll talk to and give them information and let them decide what's best for them. And sometimes it's not best for them to make a move. And I'm OK with that. And I tell them that, you know, I'm not here to pressure you into a decision that's not best for your family, do I, but I do feel it's important for you to educate yourself and get the information you need to make a good decision based off of information versus based off of fear or um, misinformation. So, you know, I, I, I really do enjoy helping people and seeing the end result and getting the gratitude and appreciation, you know, from most people, you know, when yeah, absolutely. Well, I, you know, years ago, I used to had a list of a number of things, and, and you're bringing up a great point of educating them, helping them, obviously making a difference in their lives, and really taking the time and the energy to, you know, be honest with them and be okay with any of the answers that they give. And I remember years ago, back when you know, I was selling, I remember I came up with a list of about six things that I would say, hey, these are all your choices, and I'm okay with any of those choices. Mm -hmm. Today, you know, taking off the list, most of the choices today are not to short sale a property or to foreclose on a property with what our market's doing, of course. But there's really three choices that I, I think if you were to really reflect upon this, the whole group, you got, they can either stay in the home, mm -hmm. they can either sell the home, mm -hmm. or they can rent the home. Yeah. And and just knowing that you're personally OK with any of the answers is pretty powerful place to be. It allows you to be able to give of yourself, give of your talents, give of your knowledge uh, without having to have just an absolute. It's got to be a certain way. So yeah. I think it's a great point, Deanna. And, and I think sometimes we get so consumed with having to have a certain outcome that we lose sight of what the client needs. So well yeah. said. Hey, so exactly. what, t tell us just a little bit about what got you into real estate. Oh, wow. Okay. So what got me into real estate is I do real estate investing. And we've been doing that for my husband and I partner with my father-in-law, my mother-in-law. Um, my father-in-law didn't have any type of retirement. And my husband knew that he'd literally be, never be able to retire with the financial situation they were in. So Blair was already interested in learning about real estate investing. And so he came to his dad and said, do you want to do this with me? And we'll split everything 50-50. So that's what got us started. And we've been doing that for like 
18, 19 years, something like that. And, and, you know, we're into it and Blair's like, why don't you get your license and you can be our agent. And I was like, okay. So I got my license and then, you know, started doing it full time in, um, about 2011. Okay. okay. To, no, 2010, 2010 was when I started doing it full time. Um, and obviously you're doing your, time. you're doing your investing along yeah. with, of course, today, which I, you know, I know, cause we've had lots of conversations, but just wanted to put that out there. Obviously you're selling a bunch of property also for clientele, you know, buyers, yeah. sellers, and doing the, what you might call the traditional yeah. business along with your investments. Is that correct? Well, and that's most of my business. Most of my business isn't my personal investments anymore. Most of my business, like 90% to 95% of my business on a yearly basis is um, is what I'm doing for just regular buyers and sellers. So it's I love it. my numbers so, aren't reflected on my own investments. So yeah, tell 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 us how many how many doors or properties, however you want to define it. How many doors or properties do you have today? Oh, okay. Well, I we know this is the good news. We know it's more than one, which is pretty powerful <laughs> in today's market. Between multi and single families, I want to say we're between 30 and 34. Good for so, you. That's yeah, great. And we are we, we have one under contract right now that'll close um in about three weeks. That's you know, a sixplex. So kind of excited about that. That's the first, you know, kind of commercial we've gotten because we've always done four plexes and lower. So good for um, you guys. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your success and what you guys yeah. are doing. So the good news, I presume the retirement for your father and father or father-in-law. I'm not quite My sure. My father-in-law. Your so father-in-law. I'm, I'm guessing actually, that uh that he has a good retirement now. He should. So he's actually retiring this summer. Hopefully good for him. It's the plan. So it, you know, it's it's gonna be really nice for him to be able to be done working because he's a workaholic. Good for you so. guys. That's awesome. Good for him. All right, so here's the deal. Then let's just, just just let's just tap into that just for a moment. What advice would you give an agent in regards to today's market specific to investing? What would you tell them they should be doing? I mean, obviously you're closing on a property, right? You're being able to buy a property. What yeah. would you say in regards to building their financial future, using real estate as a vehicle to do so? What advice would you give to an agent in regards to investing financially or from standpoint from a, a real estate perspective? Oh, that's great. So the biggest thing is, I mean, if you can find something off the market, that's when you're going to get, you know, a better deal. So that's where door knocking and cold calling, you know, really comes into play. Um, but if you own your home and you have great equity in your home, I don't think it's a bad idea to get either a HELOC or a cash out refi and try to roll that money into an investment property. But you really need to look at the numbers. I think that's the biggest problem with people that start investing. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what numbers to analyze um, and all of the numbers to take into consideration. And they end up buying something and they're upside down in it. So I think it's really kind of educating yourself, figuring out um, the numbers that make sense so that you're not overpaying, which is hard because in, in this market, you know, everything is is has a premium price on it so it's just making sure that you know you are looking at all the numbers and if anybody has a question about that if anybody has a question about okay what do, what do i need to be looking at they're more than welcome to reach out to me i'm happy to pass along information that i have and knowledge that i have and if i don't know it i'll get it you know because i don't know everything you know i i go to my sure. husband a lot at, at, a high, at a high level deanna just because i know people are what, what give me just a perspective of when you would say hey i'm looking for we look for a particular type of number is it hey it has to cash flow i mean you've said some great things obviously so many people have equity in their homes right now uh, they're capable of buying other properties i've seen people a lot of our agents who have done that uh, what, 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 just give us a, a high level view of what would be your, just your general rules in regards to uh, uh, being, cash flow and, and just a, wow. a basic number. Cause I know cap rates are very difficult right now, yeah, right? I mean, they are. And that's what challenge. I was going to say is cap rates and cash flow are numbers. Okay. So our normal rule used to be that we wanted to see 1%. So the rents had to basically be 1% of the purchase price. 
Okay. So if we were buying a multi-unit and the rents were $3,600, we wouldn't want to pay more than three sixty dollars for that. And that's not realistic in this market. You're not going to get anything at that price in this market. So you just have to make sure that it has some type of a cash flow after everything is taken into consideration and said and done because rents are up right so now. So your primary rules, make sure I'm sure clear, the primary rule for you today is not the 1%, which no. you know I remember that used to be the, the deal for so many years. That was just the general rule. Yep. Just wanna make sure I'm clear so everyone's hearing this. And that is, hey, just make sure that you have cash flow, whether it's $1 and well, maybe- I wouldn't go that low, you know, I would okay. think, you know, I, my personal opinion, I would think it needs to be like a hundred dollars a door every month because you have okay. to take into consideration, you know, and, and all of these numbers should be in your, your evaluations anyways, between vacancies and repairs and, you know, those type of things. Um, all of those numbers should be taken into consideration, but I would think if you can net a hundred bucks a door after everything is said and done, you know, you should be okay. Right. So between vacancies, capital improvements and general repairs, yeah. uh, I mean, bottom management line, fees, factor in management fees, even if you're going to be managing it yourself, just so that you have that cushion with those numbers. OK, do you I was gonna, do you guys manage most of your properties personally or do you outsource? You manage nope. personally? Yeah, we do everything ourselves. So it, it's all in house <laughs> and it's well, a lot um, of work. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? You're setting yourself up. I mean, you know, you you know, you, you look at the hours that it takes people, and sometimes I think we we want things to come so easily. And one of the things I wrote down today, and I'm going to talk about it. I'm not going to I'm not going to do a spoil, but I'll give a little at least a little tiny spoiler alert. That is that success takes time. Yeah, there's a process, right? And you yeah. said that how many, how many years ago did you start investing? 18 years ago? 18, 19 years ago, something like that. You know, right. when we and bought so our first property. We're too old, or it, our time has passed, and the reality is. Man, I look at the majority of what, even just Everest, this crazy stuff that we all do together has all been created in 11 years. And I had yeah. lost everything 11 years ago. And here we are today, you know, it's it's a whole different ballgame and life can change very, very quickly. But yeah. sometimes we underestimate what we can do in a short time and even a long term. So that's great. All right, let's switch gears. So tell us a little bit about your real estate career, your real estate business. So today, what would your what does your business look like? Like, where's the sources of your business? What have you strived to work towards? What are you working on? Tell us a little bit about your business. And I was okay. looking at your numbers. They're, they're somewhere on my desk yesterday. Or right here, they're right in front of me. Uh, uh, this I was looking at, and I'm uh, and I'm always so impressed by what you're doing. I love the fact that you said that 95% of the business that you're doing is business, uh, obviously from just the normal buyers and sellers. So yeah. talk about the sources, talk about how you've built your business, and we'll talk about the good parts, and then maybe you can say, hey, this is my struggle in my business. But what what do you talk, let's tell talk, first talk about the sources of your business? Okay, so sources of my business right now. Um, I do a lot of door knocking, actually. I really enjoy door knocking. I've had great success with it. I knocked the entire pandemic. I've never stopped and I've never had an issue. Um, so I, I, I feel like that is a great way for people to try to get some business. Um, I've done just listed, just sold calls and gotten leads off of that. Um, SOI, past clients, referrals, you know, that's, um, basically my business. I'm not really doing expireds or for sale by owner calls. Um, so, but I don't feel like I need to branch so, into that. So, so primarily working, of course, with your sphere of influence, mm -hmm. right? So contacting them, mailing them, emailing them, doing your thing there, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Consistently, yeah. right? And yep, then number two, that's right. All right. All right. Number two, but number two, you're, you're, you're knock, you're, you're primarily you're knocking on doors is you, is one of your primary sources of business, which I love. I mean, my goodness, Deanna, that's that's one of the things that right when I first started coaching uh, uh, Tina Hare, that was the exact thing I said. Look, we got to get back to doing more door knocking. Uh, I look at uh, you know I look at these people who are, are are at this business level that are at these extreme levels, and people almost can't comprehend. But it all started 
whether it be a Brian Burnett, a Tina Hare, it, it, they door knocked and they just had wonderful relationships with people. Yeah. So, so just let's talk about this. Let's get as it, as what would be the rules that you have? What is, what are you, what are your disciplines in regards to door knocking? How much door knocking are you doing per week? Uh, how much door knocking, how many doors are you talk? Are, are you hitting a day? What give us some of the rules to your door knocking? Okay. So, um, I am trying to knock three days a week, depending on my schedule, you know, because I do have so much on my plate. Sometimes my schedule doesn't go as planned. My goal, like I was doing three days in the office where I was doing a lot of follow-up and SOI and, you know, um, just listed, just sold calls and then two days a week of door knocking, but I'm flipping that and doing three days a week, door knocking and two days calling. So with that, you know, I, will get my contacts. I don't care how many doors I knock. My goal is to get the contacts. Okay. Okay. So how so many my contacts? Goal is 36 contacts. So, so you 36 know, contacts a day. Yeah. For so, those. And, and even I'm if I clear, don't. And three days a week. Yeah. Okay. So three days a week, 36 contacts a day. Yeah. And you're making 200 plus thousand bucks a year. Yeah. I just hope everyone's hearing that. I'm not trying to make light of it. What I'm trying to say is that it is inexcusable in today's market, no matter what's going on, to be earning money. That's that's the point. And how about this? If you want to add an additional couple hundred thousand dollars to the income you already have, get out and start door knocking. Or to your point, you're making phone calls also, because in some communities, especially still in, in uh, the LA County area, you can't knock doors. But I know you can knock doors in Ventura, and I know you can knock doors in Salt Lake and Davis and Weber and anywhere in Utah. So the, the question is, is, you know, you got to ask yourself, what are you doing as an agent? Are you sitting back and waiting for business? Are you still on this mindset? I'll just go buy business, buy leads. Or are you going to do what you have as a great example, Deanna, what you're doing, which is going out and knocking or calling. And then, of course, working your sphere. Yeah, I love it. That's great. So talk. What is let's get a little bit more. I'm going to put you on the spot. So you're knocking on my door. What does that look like? OK, what are you well, saying? Uh, depending on my purpose. Um, I've knocked on doors to try to find homes for clients. Okay. Um, I'll knock on the doors of my listings and just, so it, it, it's a different script depending on the purpose of, of my knocking on the door. If I'm there to look for a house for a client, someone comes to the door and just say, hi, my name is Deanna Haskett. I'm a real estate agent with Century 21 Everest. I have a client that I'm working with. Um, Oh, I guess I'm kind of getting off my own script right now. I'll, I'll tell them. I don't know if you're aware of what's going on in the real estate market right now, but we have an absolutely insane market and buyers are really struggling to get in homes. And I have a buyer that's looking for a home in this area. Have you considered at all making a move? And then depending on what they say will be, you know, my next questions. If they say no, which most people do. And, you know, I'll just go, oh, okay, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. How long have you been here? You know, and, and then start going into the, those five <laughs> questions. Um, how long have you been here? Where did you move from? If you did move, where would you want to go to next? Well, when do you think that might be? And, you know, the more questions you ask people, the more they're willing to open up. I've had people that say, no, I'm not interested. And they're like, well, we've actually been talking about it. Um, but we're scared to do something because the market's so crazy right now. In fact, I got a door knocking the lead last night that um, same thing. It's an, it's in a, a listing of mine. I knocked and said, Hey, I'm selling this house. We had an insane amount of activity, lots of offers above list price. Have you considered making a move? And they said, um, well, we've thought about it, but well, first she said no. And then I asked her questions and then she said, well, we've kind of talked about it, but because the market's so high, you know, we don't want to move. I said, well, have you looked at the numbers? I said, I have relocated and helped my clients upgrade their homes within the last year with our prices going up. And because of their equity and the low interest rates, they've actually been able to keep their mortgages close to the same, which is true depending on what they're doing. Sure. You know? <clears throat> so I'm educating people. And so she's going to talk to her husband and see if he's good to meet with me and go through numbers. And I always tell people I'm not a high pressure salesperson. I'm not there to try to make them go in a direction that's not best for them, but I do feel it's best to educate them and at least give them the information they need to make a good decision based off of information. And if they decide to stay, that's great. So, well, Deanna, what's evident, what I love 
is that what you're saying you can tell you actually say. Yeah. And what I and that may seem like, what are people like, well, what do you mean? I'll get in these in moments like this, right, where I'll ask you questions or ask an agent questions, and you can tell that they're trying to modify everything they're saying. They're trying to manufacture what they quote the right script or dialogue. And what you can tell is that this is what you say. You can see how natural it is. You can see how crazy it is. And may, maybe what would you say at this point, just a random guess, how many doors do you think you've knocked on or conversations you've had at the door in the last decade? What would be your oh guess? Gosh. Thousands? I would guess at least a thousand doors. Well, I'm sure it's more than that. <laughs> All right. I'm like, I'm terrible with numbers. My point is this. I'm terrible with numbers. Oh, oh, okay. Here, here we go. So was there a point where you were nervous? Was there a point you were scared? Of was there course. a point where you doubted yourself? Of course. I still do. I still have to psych myself up to get out of the car and to start knocking doors. But once I start, I get that first door down. I'm fine. And I okay. can go. So how, okay, so let's talk about, it. you said psych yourself up. Yeah. How do you conquer the fear or the conversation that we all at times have that, that call reluctance or that, let's just say door reluctance. How do you bring that back around to where you're like, you know what? It doesn't matter. So, I mean, how I did is it doesn't matter how I feel. I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. How do you do it? How do you get out of the car? How do you pick up the phone? How do you do it? Um, so when I'm in those situations and I'm really struggling to get out of the car or struggling to pick up the phone, I think to myself, you know, what's my goal? What's my goal here? You know, and, and my husband has really helped me with that to help me realize, okay, what's the goal? You know, like if your goal is to get X amount of contacts sitting in your car, isn't going to get you those contacts, you know? So I'll sit there and I'm like, okay, I can do this. You know, people love working with me and, and I kind of do those positive affirmations to myself in my car. And then I'm like, okay, oh. let's go. And then I go. Uh, but, but Deanna, so basically you craft a better story. You say, you're a great salesperson, right? So you sell yourself on your goals, your objectives, your dreams. Hey, this is what I want. This is why I'm doing this. This is, I mean, so you're legitimately negotiating with yourself and creating a better outcome, right? Yeah. Gosh, I hope everyone's hearing that. And by the way, what a golden nugget of just hearing you have a conversation for someone and going into a neighborhood. So, I mean, I, I mean, if I had everyone raise their hand and say, hey, how many of you have a buyer that you can't find a home for or can't get accepted? I mean, in today's marketplace, going and knocking doors uh, in lieu of waiting to see if it pops up on the MLS yep. and what a powerful way to, to run your business today. The other thing is, is look at all the competitors gang. I just want you to think about this for a moment. All of the competitors that are out there are the Zillow's, the advertising, the billboards and all the things that we see. And one of the things that I'm appreciating Deanna from what you're saying today, and I hope agents are hearing this is that you're cutting right to the core of connecting with another human being. See, Zillow or billboards, or they're waiting for someone to reach out, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're trying to get, the aggregators are trying to get in the way of meeting you so that they can then sell you the very lead that you could go out and get. But we yeah. choose to wait and hope that they'll call or hope that someone will come or hope that we can go buy a lead and what you're doing and, ex and, and expressing and showing and the agents who succeed in this business are doing it, you go out and you connect to the people. Yeah. And almost every objective is about going and talking to people. And look, nothing's going to change in this business for an agent if they, don't, if they do not go out and consistently talk to people. We can call yeah. it prospecting, we can call it lead follow-up, we can call it uh, you know, lead generation, we can call it whatever you wanna call it. I like to just simply just go talk to people and see what can happen. And to your point, you get the first one down, then you're kind of on your way and the momentum and, and the, the lid is lifted and you're able to keep going. So exactly. what advice would you have for someone who's really struggling to get out there and knock on a door, pick up a phone, whatever your community is allowing you to do or your, your environment's allowing you to do, what would you advise them? What would you tell them they should do? Um, so, no. Okay, I want to make sure I'm understanding your question. What advice am I going to give somebody that needs to get out 
someone who's really someone who is really struggling to prospect, struggling to kind of get out of their own way, struggling okay. to okay. to go knock a door. What what advice would you give them to just say, hey, you know, in other words, you can do this. And what advice would you give them to how to do that and get past that? So I appreciate that question a lot, actually, George, because I think that we are our worst enemies and I'm my worst enemy. You know, I am constantly like the, the negative thoughts that I have, you know, are in abundance. And um, it, it goes back to it, it makes me think of John's morning ascent yesterday where he talked about the uh, a human her brain has like 60 thousand thoughts in a day or something like that and most of them are negative and it's so true so I think it's breaking that cycle it's it's really focusing and analyzing what are your goals what are you wanting out of life because you can either achieve something if you're willing to get out of your comfort zone that's the biggest problem right there those two words your comfort zone you know if we stay in our comfort zone you cannot grow you cannot build yourself. You can't learn. You can't um, like it's it's just like exercising. You know you can't build muscle unless your muscles break down and you know and you're doing those different things. So it's the same type of thing. When if you're going to only stay in your comfort zone, you're never going to succeed in life. You're not going to get the things that you want. You're not going to achieve the things that you want to achieve. So it's being willing to get out of your comfort zone. And um, push yourself. And once you do, it'll get comfortable again. And so then you need to push yourself again, you know, because, you know, I will get to a point to where I get comfortable and then I have to do something different to get right, myself right. comfortable again. So there's that's the biggest thing is just don't stay in that comfort zone, you know, be willing to ask someone to go door knocking with you. I've gone door knocking with people where, you know, I don't like being at a door with somebody per se. If somebody needs to learn how to door knock and they want to go with me for an afternoon and, you know, they can listen to me, I'm happy to do that. But I prefer to, if, if I'm going with somebody, they go one direction and I go the other, and then we meet back up. And we go over, you know, our numbers and how do we do and did we get any leads and how many contacts did we get and those type of things. So I, I, I think that's a, a great way to help you get out of your comfort zone too is, is having somebody that you're going with or, you know, if you're making calls in the office, be willing to have somebody else in the office with you. Both of you are making calls. That way you make sure you're on the phone, that you're not wasting time playing on your computer or something like that it's you know i suck at accountability I suck at accountability you know it really is to to help you to be able to do better is you have to be willing to be accountable even if it's to yourself you know and that's something i'm doing 75 hard right now i'm sure you've heard of that george yes i have and for me i am sticking to it i'm on day like 30 today which is huge for me because I'm having to be accountable to myself and I hate accountability, but you know, it, I know that without it, I'm not going to grow. Oh, I so. love that Deanna. And, and, and to your point, before I walked out, my wife handed me this. Is that your 75 hard? That's the 75 hard. She's a, she, she, she gave me the requirements. And, I love uh, it. So I, I asked her for them, and she before I even left, she had them printed out, because because she's of course doing it and 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 rocking it and and doing it, and she's in and uh, and she didn't want to walk late last night because she needed to do her forty five minutes in the evening and get outside, and so she's like, "You're doing basically you're doing this." Yep. So I, I but uh, good for you. I love it. That's <laughs> awesome. Hey, this, just two things. I hope everyone heard it. I mean, there's so many takeaways, but. One, you talked about the fact that you don't like accountability, but you also may not like it, but you recognize the importance of it. Yeah. So you said two things. One, obviously, you said 75 hard, which is a health program. And so often I always say to people, submit to the program, right? Submit to the process. And so many people don't want to submit. But if you'll submit to a program of some sort, yeah. it's crazy how good things can be if you'll plug and play. Yeah. And the second thing you talked about was 
hey, I'm not really hip on just always having someone right next to me, but you talked about the level of accountability that occurs by just having other people involved with similar goals, similar objectives, uh, similar activities and schedules, that if you align with those people, good things can happen. Yeah. As very few people get to the top of the mountain alone. And even if you get there all alone, it's a pretty lonely place to be. So I found is in, in my career that even though I may have some be able to do something specific in the business better than someone else, if I have them by my side, it helps me raise up and I get to bring them up with me. There is so much abundance and so much available uh, business in this marketplace. And the fact is, if you don't have business fundamentally, it means you must change the approach. Yes. You've said knock doors in areas where you want where you have clients who want to buy. Yeah. You've said, I knock doors to go find investments before they're put on the market. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, your investments, your current business, and everything you're doing, Deanna, that I've heard is that you do one thing consistently well. You talk to people and yeah. you have a conversation that is sincere, meaningful, and that you want to make a difference. So kudos to you, to your family, to Blair, and to everything you guys are doing. You guys are killing it. And I love watching it. And I'm so grateful that you're part of the organization. Thank you. I appreciate it. And you got a big smile. That's the kind of smile you get yourself on TV a lot, by the way, Deanna. All right. That's awesome. Well, thank you for everything. We're, 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 we're a minute over, but uh, again, I hope I'll, I'll see you at the summit or uh, yep. virtually. And nope, guys, just as a reminder, there. today at 12 noon uh, is the is the summit. Uh, I may have the dates at times exactly. Uh, California would be 11, 12 noon Utah time. It starts. I think we'll be kicking off and speaking right about 1230, but we hope to see you there and hope to, you're going to be a part of it and have a great day. Let's finish up with some affirmations again. Deanna, you're awesome. Thank you for everything and thank you for your contribution and giving back to this uh, uh, great group of agents. Again, the greatest gathering of real estate professionals the world has ever seen. All right, here we go.